Hi everyone. Um, sorry, it's been a little bit. I had um, my workload doubled this week, so I have twice as many clients as usual. So I do not have a lot of extra time this week for fun things like videos. Um, but I was getting a lot of questions recently about offerings, um, what to leave for offerings, and then also how to dispose of them properly. So um, lots of times your offerings are going to be dictated by the working that you're doing and the type of working that you're doing and also the spirit or the deity you're working with. Um, certain spirits or saints prefer more grandiose offerings and some of them prefer very humble offerings. It's an easy place to start is um, always with a, um, a nice altar space or um, table space. I always cover mine with a, a clean cloth. It doesn't have to necessarily be something sold as an altar cloth. I like to go to yard sales and garage sales and pick up the old um, vintage linen ones because I really like the prints on them and I really like the linen fabric. It's something that I think is um, makes a really a really nice rich tablecloth or an altar cloth so um, you would want to begin with with that with a clean surface and that um, may also include cleaning it with Florida water or um, Hoyt's cologne if you prefer uh, some people like to scrub down their their altar with uh, glory water put in into some some warm water and just wiping it down with a rag to each time that you redress it to get rid of any um, you know residual energies that you don't want on there and just as a gesture that you're making this as nice a space as possible for the spirit or deity to be honored at. Um, so I always start with a glass of fresh water. I like to collect little vintage mismatched glasses from also from garage sales and yard sales. Um, they're pretty and I, I, I like the idea of so many altars and hoodoo are really dark. Um, Everything's just really dark and dingy and dirty and I I'm not a fan of that and I don't think hoodoo has to look like that and I don't think it has to be that way. So I like to keep my offerings really fresh and bright and my cloths um, with a white background and then bright florals on them. Um, that's obviously personal preference but it seems like a lot of the photos that I see in books are just really um, really dark and I don't think that that helps dispel any negative connotations about our practice. Um, I think it just uh, I think it just makes it worse to see only one um, one representation of it. So I try to keep my altars really light and fresh looking. Um, so your glass of water again for like the third time and um, I always like to do uh, fresh flowers and um, fresh herbs if possible. Um, and then it would be something that I made. It could be, um, you know, a loaf of nice bread or something specific to that deity. I like to bake for, bake and cook for my uh, Orisha when I'm honoring them on their days of the week. Um, some people don't, you know, have to get that far into it. You can go to the store and buy something just as lovely to put out. Um, and uh, always a nice, um, you know, I don't want to say. Yeah, all purpose. I'll say all purpose. That's a good word. All purpose incense. Um, there's many incenses out there that are specifically inclined for um, drawing spirits or um, deity or increasing, you know, uh, your messages, your communication. So you could look for one of those. Um, but very basic and simple to start to start out with. Those are those are just basic things you would have. And then of course your candles. Lots of people love their candles and love to use those. So super basic. And I'll go into um, altar setup further on. I want to do one hopefully later this week about um, setting up one for ancestors. So, but the main thing I wanted to touch on today was also um, how to dispose of offerings. So your offerings would be, you can do them for, I kind of roll this all into one because anytime I do a working, for me it's an offering. I. Um, I try not to ask for specific uh, things. I try to just give reverence, and um, uh, I know that the saints and the spirits and the and deities and my Orisha know my intention. And um, if they see fit to answering it, that's wonderful. And if not, 
uh, that's fine too. I still I still honored them. It was it came from a pure place. So, um, but if you were doing a work for um, love, my choice of after everything is all burned down, you're and you have your candle wax remnants, you have your um, leftover food, your flowers, your herbs that you used. Um, I take that to one of two places. For me, it would either be um, in a cemetery where I'm very familiar with the graves, which I'm lucky I have one right next to my house, and I've gotten to know it over the years and studied the history about many of the graves there. So I would take that to the grave of um, a couple. Often a husband and a wife are buried next to each other. So I would, I would take that there. Now it takes some time to get to know the spirits behind those graves and whether or not that's a, a good couple to place that at. But generally you can, you can do that and you'll get to know as you frequent a cemetery more often, which, you know, which graves you prefer and, and which ones, you know, which ones you don't so much. They don't call you so much. Um, uh, the second place I would take it to is a church because that is typically where people get married and that is typically the the highlight of you you being in love that's uh your that's one of the happiest days of your life you're doing it because you're completely in love and uh so that's uh that's my second choice for where to um take offerings from love workings to or in remnants um, it's easier for me to visit the cemetery because I live closer to one than it is the church But if you live closer to a church, you could just go there at night and um, I take a I take a spade with me a small small trowel when I go and uh, So I can kind of um, hide them a little bit uh, I don't have to do that so much in the cemetery, but around a church you would want to do that and um, so your your workings for um, Let's say like change of luck or change of change of fortune. Um, anytime you're trying to change something in your in your life, um, you're trying to reverse the situation or get things back to how they were, or uh, like I said, change your luck. You would want to do that as a, at a crossroads. That's one place that you can do that. So I'm lucky I have a crossroads in the cemetery I live next to, so I frequent that often, and. Um, that's uh, that would be that's a transitional place. That is, um, you know, you are asking for a change in your life, and you're being specific about that. And so, leaving an offering at a crossroads is a that's a that's a transitional place to to leave an offering. So that's when you would leave that there. There are also certain um, deities and spirits that uh, hold um, crossroads sacred, like uh, Ilegua is one. Um, you have uh, Pombashira with her three-way crossroads. So those are also things that you'll learn along the way, um, and you can easily, you know, Google that. And, you know, which which deities are, you know, have the crossroads sacred to them. Hecate is one. Um, so that's something else you could also work with if you wanted to um, evoke that that particular spirit for that working and then just add that whole other layer of depth to it and then you leave the offering there at, their, at, at a place that's sacred to them. Um, for workings uh, having to do with employment or money, which is very common, um, I like to, um, on behalf of my clients, uh, if I, I expect my local clients, I can only do this for. If it's internet clients, they have to do this on their end. But if they have applied for a specific job, uh, you know, at a restaurant or, or, you know, whatever. So you, you do your working and then you would take the remnants of that and you would leave it outside, you know, under a bush or something. It can be a conspicuous. Um, I typically go in the evening or at night when it's not going to be a big deal. And I'm, I'm quick about it. You don't have to make this big, huge, like, celebration, like, with, you know, like, parades and, you, you know, fancy umbrellas. Like, just go there and drop your shit off, you know? So, I would do that for employment workings. And um, when it came to money um, workings for that... I try to leave them outside of a bank or a very um, prosperous business, a very successful business. And it's the same in the same regards where we gather dirt from these places. Um, certain mojos will require dirt from a bank. That's typically to increase your wealth and you can see how that works to where you have the, the ashe in that it, 
in, in that dirt, just like you do in the graveyard when you collect it from the heart of a grave, it's for love, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So going to a, a bank, that, that, uh, that building and that ground has that, that energy, and so that's why you would leave that there, and it's also why you, you would use that type of dirt. So, and I'll go into graveyard dirt and how to collect it and where to collect it from and all that good stuff in, again, another video. So you guys have a lot of questions and it's awesome. I love answering them. And um, I think I covered the basics for now. I'm super over time. It's like I'm getting to 11 minutes here. So I hope you guys didn't get bored and I love hearing your questions. And um, there's going to be a link at the bottom of this. You can visit my shop. And uh, I hope you all have a blessed week and uh, keep the questions coming and I look forward to more videos. Uh, Ashe!